Link down below, as always, to credit the original uploader of this article. There's somebody on Twitter, and I'm calling it Twitter because the URL is twitter.com. It's not x.com. And until that day happens, that's it. It's Twitter. They run an account called Wednesday Night Botches at All Elite Botches. It's to highlight and poke fun at AEW and all their botches. And this person said, and I quote, I've received an email with our family photo, residential address, and my kid's school address with the subject line, stop criticizing AEW. Then the person said, well, I quit. That's it. However, please save this tweet and remember AEW botches when the inevitable happens inside of the ring. Thank you all. So he still took a jab there at them on his way out. And this, to me, obviously is completely ridiculous. Good thing they weren't landing a helicopter. Jesus Christ. I've never understood this kind of mentality. Pepsi versus Coke. Apple versus Android. Biden versus Trump. PlayStation 5 versus Xbox. Why give a rat's ass what anybody prefers and what they're making fun of? Especially if they have some information to back up what it is they're saying. So in this case, they're not saying anything bad about AEW. They're letting AEW show themselves being bad with all these botches, for example. Big deal. Get over it. Well, some people can't. Just like for me, for example, really quick. A couple of years ago when I used to stream all the time, I got doxxed. And I know why it happened. In their case, they're poking fun at AEW. In my case, I was poking fun at Trump when he was president because I felt like it was just too easy. Just like now with Biden, it's too easy. It's confusing because generally I would identify as liberal, but it doesn't matter. A farce is a farce. An old dirty pervert's an old dirty pervert. I don't care who it is, what side they're on. They're getting called out regardless. If WWE screws up my beloved WWE, my precious I'm still going to call them out. I don't care if you do it. I'm not taking it personally, even if you were attacking me. I don't give a monkey's ass what anybody thinks. And that's how everybody else in the world should be. Like, years ago, when, and I have to get into this, because it, it kind of falls in line here a little bit. When I was on Twitter back when Trump first took office, there was just people that were following me by the hundreds and hundreds because I was constantly just on Trump's case because it was easy. It was funny. Same thing with George Bush, although it was a little bit easier during that era. And I would never actually make fun of the Trump supporters. I was making fun of the person himself, Trump. But then all these Trump people were attacking me because I'm attacking their beloved president and all these anti-Trumpers that would probably be liberals were all like following me and stuff like that. But then as time went on, I found out there's evil on every side. Because now I would have liberals that would slip into my DMs and call me a fake resistor. I'm like, bitch, I never said I was resisting. What the fuck am I resisting? I'm resisting the urge to backhand you so fucking hard. That your eyeballs come out of your fucking nose. I will talk to whoever the hell I want. That's always been my motto. Always, always from the get-go. I don't care what it is. We can have a civil discussion. Doesn't mean I'm going to agree with you or understand, but I'll at least see where you're coming from. I'll understand why you see things the way you do, even if I don't agree with it. It's a beautiful thing. And I've always been able to do that my entire life. And then I would have Trump supporters that are supposed to be violent and evil that were civil with me because I wasn't ridiculing them. I was allowing them to speak their mind. And I would question them and challenge them in a civil manner. So then I was like, you know what? Screw you liberals, man. Even though that's generally what I am on paper, I still would be. I was like, forget you guys. I'm just dealing with people that are 
genuine and I can have a back and forth discussion with. So that's why when I found out an old friend of mine that I played World of Warcraft with years and years ago, before we got talking about politics and all that, it was just the World of Warcraft. We were both younger. We stayed home, played World of Warcraft all the time. We were in the same guild. He was helping me out a lot. He was super friendly. I'd gotten really sick. I was in the hospital, almost died, boo-hoo, whatever, who cares? And I used to think this person was just really nice. So we finally, after like a couple of years or whatever, decided to just chat on a, I think it was like Ventrilo or TeamSpeak. It's like Discord where people from wherever can just log in, either type or actually chat vocally. And uh, yeah. And I was like, wow, this, it's nice to meet people like this, you know, that are just like normal. It's almost abnormal for them to be so normal because I'm not used to that. I'm used to confrontation and, you know, all the time. And then fast forward many years later, I find out that they're a Trump supporter. It wasn't a big deal to me. At first, I joked because I still had a little bit of that notion of, Oh, they're all pricks that none of them can be like this guy. Oh, no, they can be on paper at first glance. If I took a picture of them and showed them to you. Wow. Or showed him to you. Yeah. You'd be like, are you serious right now? The beard, the black and red flannel shirt, the mega hat, driving the truck, the flags don't tread on me, president or you know, Trump's still my president, all that kind of stuff. Just really, really looks the part. Doesn't sound the part that everybody's pushing. Just like not all liberals are snowflakes. I mean, a lot of them are, but not all of them are. That notion, again, that liberals just cry about everything and hide in a corner. And Trump supporters just want to run you over with their big 4x4 pickup truck. But sometimes these stereotypes exist for a reason because there can be a lot of truth to it. But at the end of the day, not everybody is the exact same. So it's been a non-issue for me. None whatsoever. I technically am a Christian liberal. And this guy is a atheist Trump supporter, Republican, whatever. And it's like big deal. Sometimes now that we've talked about it in recent years, maybe poke fun at each other sometimes. And, you know, he'll message me and I'll be like, so who, uh, whose hair did Biden sniff today? I said, I'm not too sure, but who's uh pussy that Trump grabbed today? Right, Because it's all in good fun. I, it doesn't have to be so serious. So I never understood ever, 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 even when I was brainwashed a little bit in, in politics, thinking that everybody was kind of the same, I was still civil with them. But to get so angry, imagine if I did that to all the people that I got along with. It feels like 80, 90% of them would all have been gone. Because... From a political standpoint, we don't exactly see eye to eye. And that's when I really realized more than ever that it doesn't really matter. If you're hardcore into Trump and you're following his thing, or you're hardcore into Biden and you're following his thing, well, you both have something in common. You're both passionate about politics. Not everybody gives a shit about politics. Not everybody cares about wrestling. Some people, oh, it's all fake shit, bullshit, right? So now you can have people that love AEW, hate WWE, and people that love WWE, that hate AEW, that have now more in common together than the person that's like, only little kids like wrestling, uh, fake shit, right? You may not like the same show, but you like the same landscape that is professional wrestling. You're an Xbox player. You're a PlayStation player. And you come together and you're attacking each other as to which console's better. 
And then somebody comes along and says, what are you, eight years old? Grow up. Video games aren't everything. Fuck that guy. Right? Now come together as gamers. You're both passionate about gaming. You both probably, for the most part, enjoy the same games, just on a different platform. Who cares? I like Bud Light or O'Keefe or Labatt Fit. Whatever. I don't even drink, so I quit a long time ago. Who cares what drink you like? Just enjoy it and shut the fuck up. Apple iPhone or an Android phone. Who cares? You're both into smartphones and gadgets and technology. Come together, share what's different, what's the same, and then move on. Poke fun at each other. Oh, how's that uh, wallpaper going for you? Mine moves. Does yours? You know, because the whole restrictions with Apple or whatever. You poke fun at each other and stuff like that. Oh, how's your, your battery life or just whatever. And you should be able to do that. I'm able to do it, and I'm nothing special. But to let your emotions get in the way is just completely uncalled for. So I, I just wanted to share this story with you. It kind of went all over the place, but I think it still kind of stayed relatively, for the most part, on topic of not caring what other people are into or not into. Try to find common ground if you can. So this person showed the AEW botches, maybe come back and go, yeah, well, about, you know, this one time and then show some WWE botches. I mean, it might take you a lot longer to, to find one. See what I did there? But it could all be in good fun. It really, really can. And then I'm going to end it with this. I'm not, I'm not even going to literally read it, but it's just to kind of show you my point. So this is on uh, ringside news. And in the comment section, he puts in brackets, you know, the whole I've received an email with our family photo and blah, blah, blah. And then he says, this anti AEW moron actually has kids. Somebody found this Nimrod attractive enough to procreate with him. Eight people liked it. Eight people didn't like it. And that just proves my point right there. Like, uh, it just boggles my mind. It really, really does. Like I said, I can talk about stuff that's very divisive at times, but it doesn't have to be actually divisive amongst the people when we have a discussion. It doesn't have to be. It used to be not awkward, but for, for maybe for some people to to talk amongst each other, especially in the political world. Not, not so much the wrestling world, but the political world, and it just shouldn't be that way. Really, you should just be able to talk about whatever it is you want. If there's something you don't understand, you could say, look, I don't get this, whatever it may be, without being labeled a bigot, or I think you know where I was going with that. It's, it's really sad, and in closing, this is why for decades, I haven't really hung out with anybody, nothing like that. I keep practically all of my social contact online because even online people can't get along imagine in person people can be really scummy there's good people out there i know that the problem is there's not as many as you might think especially in the last couple of years with covid not not going to get into it because i think i got into enough stuff as it is but I met a couple people, ah, COVID's nothing. And then some other people, oh, it's the end of the world. And I'm like, well, which one is it? I'm trying to stay in that balance and that, you know, happy medium in the middle somewhere. And again, I've been able to find common ground with, with both different types of people. And it's been great that way. And it's been very respectful. And for me, that restores my faith in humanity when you're able to do that. Not when a Trump supporter says something and then I chime in and, and say, okay, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Do you mind elaborating on this? And like I said, a couple people slip in. And what are you doing engaging with them? That's how you evolve as a society, as people. Our technology, you know, with our phones and all that, uh, we might have come a billion years, you know, like really far out with how much we've advanced. 
But in some ways, socially, I think we've regressed back to the fucking Stone Age. Like, anyhow, as always, if you like the video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up. It does greatly help support the channel with the algorithm. And if you didn't like the video, go ahead, give it a thumbs down. We'll bend it in half, twist it, and break it off in your ass. That's right. I said it. And if you want to subscribe, exactly. I don't even need to finish that sentence. You know what's up. Take care, and maybe I'll see some of you in the next one. Bye for now.